Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 30th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Recently, I have been seeing more and more talk about two different DNS features. So I wrote them up with a little bit of real packet captures in case someone is interested in them. First feature is DNS cookies. That's supposed to replace or at least augment DNSSEC somewhat. DNSSEC, of course, is not all that easy to set up. DNS cookies set themselves up pretty much automatically. So the hope is that it's safe enough and a lot easier to deploy than DNSSEC. Now Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, which was just released, has uh, this feature enabled by running the latest version of Bind. The other issue, DNS over TLS has gotten a real big boost recently with Cloudflare supporting it on their Quad 1 DNS servers that they just deployed. Another issue that probably helps with DNS over TLS is that the very popular DNS forwarder Unbound supports it. Unbound is pre-installed in many Linux and BSD based firewalls. So if you have one of them, it may be possible to enable it on your firewall. The advantage of DNS over TLS is privacy. It doesn't really protect anybody from reflective attacks or from spoofing, but it does protect the connection from the client to the respective recursive name server, which of course in this case would probably be Cloudflare's name server. But well, enough about DNS. Let's take a look at other news. Apple today released an update for iOS and watchOS, as well as for iTunes and tvOS. Notably missing here is macOS. The main focus here was a set of new features around iOS. And now the problem is that these patches, of course, also include security updates. And many of these security updates will probably also apply for Mac OS with the overlapping code base. We have seen in the past where pretty much all of the vulnerabilities are sort of covering all the different operating systems. Apple has, as a result, not released any details about any security content in these updates. So I would expect an update for macOS to follow shortly, at which point we will probably see more details about the security content of these updates. And attackers are really just one attacker is apparently trying to exploit a bug in the EOS smart contract platform. It's yes, yet another one of these cryptocurrency APIs. The bug they're trying to exploit here is that private keys are exposed, of course, without authentication on port 8888. All you have to do is just look for the v1 slash wallet slash list keys URL and you should be created with the private keys from the system if it wasn't configured correctly. EOS tries to compete somewhat with Ethereum and is trying to raise right now $4 billion in an initial coin offering in order to support its platform. The particular vulnerability being exploited here has already been patched and it isn't really clear how many of these exposed clients are really out there listening on port 8888. And if you're using NPM, the JavaScript package manager in order to deploy applications, you may have seen a very odd problem earlier on Tuesday, error 418. I am a teapot. Now, uh, this particular HTTP error code is a very common joke. There is an April 1st RFC that defines an HTTP coffee protocol that defines this particular error message. Apparently, the cause of this was that if you are located behind a proxy, and the proxy, as many proxies do, appends the port number to the URL, in this case, the NPM server did respond with this error message. 
So if you didn't sit behind a proxy, then you probably didn't have a problem. It took the NPM team about seven hours to fix this issue. And IBM's X-Force research team came across a pretty odd Trojan. Now it is a banking Trojan, it steals banking credentials, but then it exfiltrates them back to the attacker by connecting to a SQL server database. So the bot itself actually includes credentials to connect to that database. And then the data is essentially just sent to the database as SQL commands. Now, personally, I don't think this was done to make the bot more stealthy. Probably standard methods like HTTPS would be more difficult to detect than a pretty obvious SQL connection. And of course, by including the username and password for the SQL database in the bot, the attacker is actually exposing the data to anybody with the necessary reverse engineering skills to recover the encrypted username and password. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.